Hey guys, it's going to see Tomorrow again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to basically continue the previous video on hand tracking. We did start to track key points in our fingers which allow us to basically place a spear in every one of our fingers. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to extend that example a little bit more and actually start doing some drawing. So we're going to be able to draw with our fingers by using a trail render. And then once we have that going, I'm also going to show you how it's running on the Magic Leap. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I did as part of the second video for the Magic Leap hand tracking of key points. So this video, what I want to do is show you how easy it is to add implementation to be able to draw in the Magic Leap with your fingers. And you probably saw that I posted an example in Twitter that, you know, I show you how to do that. And not actually how to do it, but actually the results of that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did accomplish that. So right now I have a hand tracking key points controller, which I show you in the previous example. And it has basically a hand key point. So for this video, I can show you basically the component that we would need to add to be able to draw, which is actually fairly simple when it comes to, to drawing. And there's many ways that you can accomplish that. In this, in this case, I use what's called a trail render. And I changed some of the parameters in the trail render to simulate drawing. So if I wanted to do that, I could easily change the prefab that I have in here. I could remove that and then basically use the one that has the trail. So in the next video, I'll show you adding more extensibility to that. But what I want to show you what it would do if I were to place it in here. So if we go ahead and drag it and drop it in here and I go into it. And in fact, we can just basically open up the prefab. So, so you can see that it has a mesh render, which is going to be the one for the sphere. It also has a sphere collider, but it also has a trail render. So for those of you who haven't used a trail render, a trail render, what it allows you to do is what it says. It basically creates a trail. So if I were to draw, if I were to move it around, it's basically creating a trail, but not only creating a trail that, you know, that looks like it's, it's actually a drawing, but you can actually tell it how many vertices to basically create as you're moving the sphere. So in this case, you can see that I'm moving it around and the trails are staying, but for some games, people may just want to basically draw a trail and then have it disappear. So you might see that in some games where your character is running and as soon as it's running, there might be, you know, either some particles that kind of, you know, spawn or, or some kind of effect that simulates the speed of the character and then it goes away. So that some of those things are also created by using a trail render. So if I wanted to, to use, you know, to do a trail render that it looks more like that, I could change some of the parameters in here. So if you can see that the trail render not only has a time, but it also has a minimum ver vertex distance. So if I were to change that to zero, you can see the trail render disappear. And if I move the sphere, it, it does create it, but it's really hard to see. So if I go back and say, well, maybe I only wanted to do it for one second and only have it show for one second, you can see that as I'm moving it around, it's basically disappearing. It basically creates in, creating a simulation of a trail. So if we wanted to do that and basically simulate drawing, because a drawing doesn't, you don't really want to, you know, let it go away unless you're doing, you know, you want that effect. But for the most part, you want to go with a big, you know, with a long number. And, and that's what I'm doing in this video. So I'm basically creating a trail render that just never, basically never goes away. It just, it just, it just has a very long time and it never disappears. So you can see that I'm basically simulating drawing blue lines and as I'm drawing around, I'm, I'm basically, you know, it looks like you're drawing and what it really is, is basically a trail render with a blue material on it. So if I want to change this to zero, I want to ch show you some different effects that you can accomplish with this. Let's say that I wanted to have that be, you know, we still have a big number, but the minimum vec vec vertex distance is going to be, you know, much higher than that. If you wanted to do that, you can see that as I move around, they basically don't break until they reach that 0.5. I 
if I were to zoom out a little bit more, you will see that I'm kind of creating, it basically creates lines, and then when it reaches that minimum distance is when it starts to break. And when I say break, it basically creates a vertice, a vertices that is basically at that point, at that distance from here to here, it's gonna be 0 0.5. So that's another effect that you can, you know, you can use for your own, you know, drawing application. If I wanted to do, let's go ahead and reset this back to zero, go to 100, and maybe we don't want it to be that high. Maybe we want it to be something like that. Then you can kind of, you know, you get a better feeling of, you know, a drawing. And so why would this help you in the AR, you know, in the AR experience for Magic Leap? Well, it'll help me because I'm already placing spheres in our fingers. So if I have something that simulates drawing and painting, you can easily attach, basically swap the, the uh, prefab that we're assigning to each sphere when we instantiate them. And they basically be this. So when you're moving your fingers, it's basically gonna do the same thing. So if this was in your finger and you move it around, it's not actually gonna do what you're seeing that it's doing right now in Unity. So let me go ahead and change this back to what it was. And then I'll explain some of the other, the other settings that I have here change this to be at zero, zero, zero. And then let's just do reset it to zero, back to 1000. I think that's, that number is fine. Then the other thing that you can do with the, with the trail render is you can also change the width. So right now I have the width set to 0 0.010. And that's because I wanted to have the same, you know, sort of kind of like the same size of the, of the sphere. And let me actually change that back to 0 0.01. Change this back to zero. And then I wanna make sure that I have it set correctly. And then this will just be a thousand. Okay, I like. I think that, that works better. Let me just set it back to zero, zero, zero. This is gonna be zero. And then we'll set it back to a thousand. So yeah, so you can change the size of this. If I wanted to do, let's just remember this. I just copy to the clipboard. If we wanted to do something much bigger, you can do you know, obviously 0.1, and that's just gonna be a very big, maybe you wanna do that because you wanna paint, you know, a large size car, or you wanna paint a building, or, you know, maybe a wall around your house that you wanna paint because you have the mapper already set and it's already detecting the wall. So you can easily, you know, have this changeable, and you might have a slider or something that changes the size, and you can basically change the size of your brush so let me go ahead and go back to what we had, which is a much lower number. And you can see that as I'm changing that, basically changes in real time, which is really helpful. You can also uh, basically, if I wanted to, if I wanted to break this and say, okay, I want to start with, so you can start adding key points. I'm not going to go into that. I think, you know, having a straight width, it's fine for the purposes of this video. So let me just go ahead and go back to zero and then 1000. All right, so those are some of those settings. The other settings that I enable is the corner vertices. So that's basically the what it says and also the end cam vertices. If I have it, if, if I have that set to zero, it's basically gonna have those ones be flat. I want it to have more of a circular, you know, corner, corner vertices, the same thing with the end cap. And then some of these settings are, are basically just what, what it was there already by default. And then just remember that the material that you're drawing, the blue, is basically gonna be the material that you assign to the render. So if you wanna change the color, make sure that you change that material. All right, so let me just set it zero, zero, zero. And then I think that looks good. And let me see, and let me just change this back to, okay, so let me make sure, let me see if I have a video that I can show you of me running that example which I believe I recorded one, and if I didn't, I will, I promise I will add one and as soon as you see the final version of this video. So if I go into, let me just go into movies, and then the, yeah, so I don't, I don't have this specific example, but I have an example that I ran when I was trying to test how the trail render would look like. So you can see that in the video, I'm doing that. I'm basically, I just basically have a different material associated with it. I have a different texture associated with it that looks more like a rainbow type color. But that's kind of the idea behind this is as you're moving your fingers, you're moving the spheres, is basically using the trail render to draw. 
So that's basically that part. So I'm basically going to call it good. And then if you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, let me know. And also be sure to check out the GitHub repository for this video, which you can find by going into github.com. And before I started this video, I checked it in. So everything should be already be, you know, uploaded to the cloud. And then you can basically just search for Magic Leap, hand tracking. And let me make sure that I make this bigger so you can see. And I'm starting to do something different too. I'm, I'm basically putting a snapshot of every experience. So the demo that I did with cloth, you can see the GIF associated with that. You can also see the superpowers. And then the hand key points, basically points demo, which is the previous video. And then I'm gonna be adding the one for this video as well. But the code is up there. You can, you can also find it under assets. And if we go under assets, and then under prefabs, wait for that to load. You can see that I have the prefab up there. So all you really need to do is go back into the, you know, the controller that I show you that was for the previous video. And then basically just swap it out with the key point prefab that you have in here. So I'm just going to change this back so that I don't change the original tutorial. But just like I said, just basically swap it, use the trail if you want to draw just the one without the trail, if you just want to track the key points. So that's everything that I had for this video. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me on patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.